Throughout history, the British Army has marched with religious guides by its side. It was Oliver Cromwell who regularised their role and most regiments in his new model army in 1645 had their own chaplain. But it was in World War I that they really came into their own, serving in the trenches. 179 British Army chaplains gave their lives. Three of them received the Victoria Cross for their bravery. In 1919, King George V gave the department its royal status. They were called upon in great numbers once again in 1939, and 96 of them were killed in World War II. Padres still serve alongside troops on the battlefield. There are currently 10 ministering to personnel in Afghanistan, but their role has changed, and it is no longer just Christian soldiers who seek their guidance. Many of the people that in my 25 years in the army that I've helped as a chaplain um, either have the Christian faith or a different faith or no faith. Um, but they will still seek out the chaplain because we live in the same world as they do and normally would be wearing the same uniform as them. So it's a ministry to all whether or not they come to church. The British Armed Forces have long since included personnel from non-Christian backgrounds and in 2005 chaplains of the key world faiths were appointed to look after the requirements of the Army, Navy and RAF. It's estimated there are currently up to 1,800 Jewish personnel, 1,800 Hindus, more than 1,000 Buddhists, around 1,000 Muslims and approximately 230 Sikhs serving in the British Armed Forces. There are also those who train in the UK from other nations, especially Muslim countries such as Saudi Arabia and Kuwait. Each faith is represented at the Cenotaph on Remembrance Day and the leaders feel that's important. It is crucial, I should say. It should be appreciated. They have sacrificed their life and, uh, and uh, if, if we just ignore their sacrifices, and the families will feel that, yes, no, it is, uh, they, they are just ignored actually and uh, how much sacrifice they have just done. For, for the country and for being a citizen and so on. As a Buddhist, um, I feel it, you know, it is specially honoured um, to uh, remember the serving personnel who have done the ultimate sacrifice for the nation. Uh, so gratitude is a very core value of, of Buddhism. Many feel the remembrance service held every year at the Cenotaph has now become quite a Christian service and whilst each of the main faiths are represented, some believe it's now time to update proceedings to make them even more inclusive. Right now it's more uh, looked at as a Christian thing and uh, uh, even though the multi-faith or the world faith, they take part in uh, uh, the activities, uh, but we're just sitting there as, uh, adi as an addition to whatever is, is going on rather than as uh, being an intrinsic part of everyone who is taking place. So it's more seen as a religious thing rather than as a military contribution which uh, different uh, military personnel from different backgrounds which the British Armed Forces which is composed of uh, personnel from all the different, uh, different religions. Uh. Each faith has its own way of remembering those who've fallen, but there are common themes. For Buddhists, reincarnation is key, with memorials taking place at seven days, three months and annually. Hindus believe the soul lives on, but the body changes, whilst Muslims also believe death marks the next phase of life. For all, though, remembrance is key. We have a great emphasis on memory in our faith, and we believe just as the Royal Marines do and others, that you always go back for your dead. We always hold on to those who have, uh, who have died, and particularly those who have died for us. Death is just another thing. It's, um, it's the ultimate reality, because we, we don't work towards death, but we enjoy life, and we enjoy death as well. This is how we take a death. It's, um, it's not something that we take, oh no, what we take it as is that this is what is going to happen in every person's life. Whilst the Christian Padres are commissioned, the World Faith Chaplains remain civilians. All undergo special military training, though this does not include how to use a weapon. But for some, their role can be wider than simply serving the military community. Remembrance Day is seen is, is a bit very is a very sensitive issue, uh, which is seen uh, controversial. On one side, people saying that well, is actually acknowledging uh, the, uh, the, the 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 wars that have been taking place, which some of the Muslim communities 
see it as unjust, uh, even though we know that's not the case. Jewish personnel get their own remembrance parade held at the Cenotaph a week after the official proceedings, and there's soon to be a specific memorial to the Sikh sacrifice in Derbyshire. But on the 11th of November, they all join together to remember those who've made the ultimate sacrifice. The people that have lost loved ones, especially the families that I've met over the years, are remembering them as they were. And if you believe in a life hereafter, whichever faith you belong to, there is a sense of final healing. Uh, and preparation for the life hereafter. Whatever faith a soldier, sailor or airman belongs to, when he is killed in the line of duty, his family and friends must find their own way of honouring his memory. Kyle Ark, Forces News.